Okay, uh, we're going to learn about the Haber-Bosch process today. Uh, now, the Haber-Bosch process is all about how to get nitrogen out of its unusable form in the atmosphere as N2 and into ammonia, NH4, which is much more useful to us. So, uh, that is the core of the process. Uh, basically, you've got N2 and we want to uh, somehow get NH4 uh, which is useful in all kinds of human endeavours. Uh, ammonia, uh, which is NH4, can be used as a weak base. It can be used to create nitric acid, which is used to create explosives. But the the most important, or the, the best thing, I suppose, that humanity has done with ammonia is we can use it as a nitrogen fertiliser. That puts nitrogen into the soil. Uh, plants can use it if it's in the soil. And, uh, yeah, plants... Um, Plants have a problem with atmospheric nitrogen, one that we're going to actually face and overcome with the Haber-Bosch process, and that's that the nitrogen is actually triple bonded together when it's in this N2 gas, and this triple covalent bond is uh, relatively difficult to break. It's got a very high activation energy required. So most plants, uh, some plants have some tricky ways of getting around it, but most of the plants that we eat uh, they don't like that, and they can't use nitrogen in the air, so they need nitrogen to be in the soil, and it's a major limiting factor for their growth. Uh, so if we can get fertilizer to the plants that has NH4 in it, we could massively boost their growth, uh, massively boost crop yields, and increase the amount of food that is available to humanity. And this is what happened uh, in the early 20th century when Haber came up with this process, and, and Bosch figured out how to implement it on a large scale. Uh, yeah, by finding a way to manufacture ammonia, humanity was able to funnel the abundant energy of natural gas into overcoming this link, creating this, uh, and basically we funneled all the energy of, uh, of fossil fuels, or not all the energy of fossil fuels, but um, a lot of the energy of fossil fuels, we could funnel that into increasing our our food production, and that was a major step forward for the human race. It, it meant that large-scale famines um, were no longer a regular occurrence, uh, at the very least. I mean, they never... It increased food yields so much that without war or, or other kind of um, silly uh, things, there'd never be like a natural famine again, essentially. So, uh, and I mean, the human race has gone from 1 billion to 6 billion people since the beginning of the 20th century, so it's absolutely fundamental, uh, this process. I can't underline how important it is. And that is why both Haber and Bosch won Nobel Prizes for their work in this chemistry. All right, so we're going to start with the main process uh, involved in, in, in this, and then we'll get to the kind of supporting chemical reactions after that. Uh, so... Yeah, the main reaction is turning nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas into ammonia. Uh, and you'll see straight away that it, it is an equilibrium reaction. So we're going to create 2NH3. It's an equilibrium reaction, so it's going forward and backwards at the same time. And uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna pose some problems. This is a reaction. Uh, that has very high activation energy required to overcome the covalent bond here. A uh, little bit necessary to overcome this one as well, uh, the H2. But um, but mostly it's this uh, needs to be overcome, and we need to um, yeah we need to deal with that. It's an exothermic reaction. It's got um, a delta H that's negative. Uh, it's negative 92 kilojoules per mole. It's not super important. Uh, it's, but it is very important that it's exothermic. Uh, and if you try to perform this at room temperature and pressure, it just it just doesn't happen. So this is why it took a uh, 20th century chemist to figure out how to do this. Uh, because uh, just under normal conditions in a lab, this is not going to happen. Uh, you're not going to even produce enough to really even uh, identify that something's gone on. You're not even going to notice it. So. Yeah, the yield from this uh, under normal standard standard temperature and pressure is very low. 
we need to increase that and that is what a lot of the Haber-Bosch process is about and basically we use every trick in the book to increase uh, the reaction rate and the yield so we want to increase the amount of ammonia produced and we've got four ways that we're going to do this you need to know all these the first one so I'll just run through them very quickly we can use a catalyst we can use pressure we can use temperature and we can remove a product all right so the easiest one is the catalyst uh, basically the catalyst produces the activation energy that's necessary for a reaction uh, there's that graph where you know, standard reaction so energy here and uh, time basically you know goes up and down so this is the root of the product these are the reactants this side and yeah so to to activate uh, the reaction which goes on here uh, takes a whole lot of energy and then energy is released and it drops down. Now using a catalyst, I mean we've, we've gone through this before but the idea is that it, it basically makes that pump smaller. It's an alternative pathway for the reaction to take place, requires less activation energy and the result of that is that um, you're going to need Yeah, you're going to need less activation energy, which means that it speeds up the reaction. But in an equilibrium reaction, it's important to remember as well that not only does it speed up the forward reaction, it makes this hump smaller for the back reaction as well. So, uh, yeah, can't hammer this in enough with the uh, with the role of a catalyst in an equilibrium reaction. It does not change the equilibrium point, so it speeds the reaction. but doesn't move I'm not going to be able to write down the space I got but it doesn't move the equilibrium point the catalyst never moves the equilibrium point but it does speed up both rates of reaction so that could increase the amount of air ammonium that's formed in a given time frame which is what we want to do uh, so in terms of the physical use of the catalyst just go through that basically what happens is in your reaction chamber, you're forcing the gases through, you're forcing them into an H2. The catalyst we use is uh, either iron filings or uh, ruthenium. Need to know probably just one of those. And it's forced over beds in the reaction chamber that catalyze the reaction. So as the gases get forced over each subsequent one, more and more of these gases combine into ammonia. Uh, but that's not enough to, um, obviously it's not enough to convert uh, as much ammonia as we want. It's an equilibrium reaction, so only a percentage of it is going to uh, is going to convert, uh, and we want to we want to increase our yield. So the next trick we use is pressure. Now, if we go back down to the original reaction, oh, we can write uh, Fe, let's write iron catalyst. Uh, now, let's look at this reaction uh, from pressure perspective in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. So to do that we want to count up the number of moles of gas we've got on each side. Now N2 is one mole of gas. Aha. Uh -huh. No mistake here. This is 3H2 here. So N2 plus 3H2. Uh, 3H2 is three moles of gas and over here we've got two moles of NH3, which is also a gas. Uh, so that's one and four, one and three and two, so that's four on this side, two on this side. Now according to Le Chatelier's principle, when we, 
uh, when we put pressure on this, it's going to force these four on this side uh, to undergo, or some of them anyway, to undergo the change uh, into the two. It's going to force the reaction from the side with more moles of gas. So it's all about the number of moles of gas to the side with less moles. So uh, that is going to shift the equation to the right. This is a pretty simple one. Uh, increasing the pressure on this reaction is going to force the reaction to this side. That was a technical problem there, but we're back. All right. According to Chatel Le Chatelier's principle, if you increase the pressure, it'll force the equation to the side with less moles of gas, which uh, is exactly what we want to do here because that'll give us more product. So that is the temperature. Sorry, that is the pressure.